Griff is 100% calling me out here. I really don't want to be that guy. And I don't say this to be mean. Do you want to know the quickest and easiest way to learn air roll? Well, today I stumbled across a video from a guide maker named Griff or Grifflicious. And if you look at the thumbnail here, it looks like what we've been told is wrong. And when it comes to air roll, he's got a better way. I don't know about you, but I'm interested. So today we're going to see what has changed and if Griff might have the air roll secret. Now I'm not saying I'm a pro coach because I'm not pro and I don't think I'm qualified to coach pros. Instead, I make tutorials like this one here for the average player, because just like you, I'm not someone who can just pick up the controller and do five minutes of free play. And next thing I know, I have cracked mechanics. So point is, if I, of all people, can learn it, I can help you learn too. On that note, I just got update our coaching sponsor, the Grand Champ Bootcamp, just crossed 50% capacity before they sell out. So if you're ranked plat, diamond, or champ watching right now, you should hear this before they sell out again. The GCB is Rocket League's number one live coaching bootcamp designed to take intermediate ranks up to Grand Champ in 90 days time. To join, you're interviewed, and then you get a coaching assessment before you're matched with a top 1% SSL or even RLCS level coach based on your entrance score. Everyone who joins immediately gets access to the GCB network of over 3,000 admittedly sweaty comp players, which pretty much that alone guarantees you'll rank up. So if you want to cut the line and rank up faster, to find out if you qualify, DM the GCB Discord account with keyword pro to speak with a program expert. I'll have their Discord account first link below. That's keyword pro to see if you qualify. Want to learn how to do this? If you're like me, you've been searching for the secret to aerial car control. Looking for that one thing that's going to just make hey, it all click. That's my video right there. Wait, go back. For the secret to aerial that's car my video. control. Looking for that one thing that's going to just make it all click. Nice. Trust me, I was in the same boat. Listening to people tell me that if I press my stick down and to the left, I'll turn right and that I constantly have to grind it out in order to get the muscle memory. But all of that is wrong. In order to build muscle memory, you first have to give your muscles something to memorize. Constantly flailing your car through the air until it makes sense isn't going to work. Okay, I'm glad Griff said that. Totally agree. One air roll shortcut is not gonna solve all your problems. And it's much better to start with something rather than just going into free play and hoping that you figure out a mechanic. I'm looking at you, plats and diamonds and maybe champs trying to learn flip resets. If you just go into free play, one, you're probably not gonna get the mechanic. And number two, even if you hit it, you're not gonna be able to do it again. Griff is totally right. It's important to understand how or why a mechanic works before you just try to throw paint at a wall and hope something sticks. I'm aware that other videos claim to do this, but trust me when I say I went from this to this in around a week just from figuring this out. It was too good not. Okay, and so Griff says he went from not being able to spin at all to continuous spinning in a week. From what I've seen coaching, do I think that's realistic? Is he just trying to get you to watch the last 10 minutes of the video? Maybe, but I think he's telling the truth. 80% of your gains when it comes to learning a new mechanic comes in the first 20 hours or the first like 20% of the time you spend learning it. So you could get the majority of the results and at least just be able to spin through level three of Left's Neon Rings here after a week. Yeah, Griff's telling the truth. Directional air roll is incredibly important because it automatically rotates your car on its Z axis at a perfect zero degrees, whereas standard air roll would require a perfect 90 degree input from center. And even then doesn't allow for the complete range of motion directional air roll does. Yes. An important add-on. If you're watching this and you're learning air roll for the first time, pick one directional air roll. Don't bind them both. It's not important that you have both air rolls bound because truth is it's going to take you hundreds of hours, if not thousands, just to learn one. And binding both is just not important early on and you're not going to need both. But number two, please don't take away a more important button like jump or boost. So that way you could fit air roll, you know, on a, on a nice part of your controller. It's best to find a button that's easy to access and doesn't hinder your car's movement or ability to perform other mechanics. For me, I chose to bind yes. air roll left to my L1 or left bumper if you're on an Xbox controller. And just so you guys know, I use square for my air roll left, whereas players even like 
Zen use triggers for arrow left. And just to be clear, none of those are better. Some people think like Zen's air roll is the secret. I asked Wait and Pilkin and Appjack about this, I believe. They were like, yeah, it might help Zen that he has joystick air roll, but it's 90% is just personal preference. To do so flying your car either on its left or right side and also inverted. Because your car's controls never change, only the orientation, it's crucial that you're able to understand how to steer your car when it's not facing you or the direction your camera is facing. Yes, I'm so glad Griff mentioned this because this was one of my biggest regrets with that air roll tutorial I made like two years ago. In my old air roll tutorial, I never told people to do what Griff is sharing here, which is first, learn how to fly forwards, upside down, sideways, and backwards before you try to learn air roll. So many new players try to skip this step and then they get upset at me in the comments when they can't learn air roll. Get your keybinds down and make sure you can fly up and down the pitch forwards, sideways, and backwards before you try to move on. For now, let's work on hovering. Simply jump into the air, tilt your car's nose up hovering. by pulling back on the left stick and tapping or feathering your boost to maintain your height. Now, before we can move to the next stage of that, we have to sidestep real quick over to another mechanic that needs to be addressed. The biggest reason higher ranked players and freestylers What's the new use mechanic we have to sidestep and learn? is because once you have the mastery of movement down while spinning your car, you actually have a more consistent and controlled 360 degree range of motion yes. while in the air. People used to debate this. Some people used to say like, oh, you don't need directional air roll for pro play. Obviously, we see where that's gone now. But yes, directional air roll is more useful in the air than joystick. And then push the stick in a singular direction. In this case, I'm pressing my left okay. stick to the right and holding. So now Griff is showing us what each joystick input does when you hold directional air roll. This is important because some new players think air roll left and air roll right is just one mechanic. No, that's not true. Each one of those is like eight different mechanics because you can air roll left and push your joystick right, or air roll left and push your joystick left, or air roll left and push your joystick down, or air roll right and push your joystick up. You know, there's so many combinations. So yes, you need to understand that each one is its own mechanic and it's gonna spin your car in a different way. Holding down air roll left, commonly known as a tornado spin. Pressing the stick in the opposite direction is, no surprise, a reverse tornado spin. Holding it down is a cuxer twist, and up is a reverse cuxer twist. The names are fun, but not super necessary to know. They will not be on the test. Some tutorials will tell you that in order to turn your car one way, you need to push your stick whatever direction they tell you to turn. The truth is, this really only works under specific circumstances. Doing a specific button input when your car is facing the same way every time can be helpful, but in terms of a mechanic that is constantly changing your car's direction and orientation, I found it much more beneficial to learn what I'm about to show you. Griff is 100% calling me out here. I, he's got to be talking. He, I'm just going to assume he's talking about my video. Hopefully I'm not just a prima donna that thinks he's talking about me just because my tutorial blew up two years ago or whatever. Who cares? Yes, I want to be very clear. Those adjustments, those tricks that I showed in my original tutorial two years ago are just that. They are just tricks. They will not give you complete control of your car, and they are just a launch pad for beginners to learn how to control their car in one direction if their car is in a preset position. The reason for showing you how the car turns in every direction while holding air roll is not how the car turns depending on your input. Instead, it's to show you that regardless of your choice of stick direction, because you're holding down directional air roll, your car will always turn 360 degrees on whatever axis of input you've set it on provided you don't change or remove any inputs. So if I hold down air roll left, jump and push my stick down, my car will always come back to the place it started. If at any point I change the direction of my left stick, it will alter the course of the spin and thus not complete a full revelation. Not super mind blowing stuff, but it's important to understand this one concept before we move forward. Once you get the feel and timing between your puffs of boost in order to keep the car up, let's begin adding some stick inputs as well to our directional air roll. Holding my left stick to the right while I air roll left, I'm now hovering and performing a tornado spin in place. If you notice, the car will constantly fly in whatever direction it is moving. Okay, so he's teaching tornado spin first. Moving in when I started gaining momentum. Hence why I can fly from one end of the field to the other tornado spinning because that's the way the car is being carried by the boost. Oh. Okay, I think I understand what he's saying. All of those words were meant to say because a tornado spin swaps your nose position 
for your tail position on your car, since it's constantly swapping the two, right? You're like going like, it's going like this, right? You only need a tornado spin to spin your car in any direction. Yes, totally agree. If you didn't know this, then this is the takeaway here. You only need one joystick input to fly around midair and reach any part of the field. Because a tornado spin is changing the direction of my nose, my nose is left, my nose is right, my nose is left, my nose is right. Because the direction is constantly changing, I can fly left or right if I just time my boost for when my nose is facing that direction. And this is why if you ever notice me fly around in free play, I can go to the right all around the field by only pushing my joystick to the right. Notice how like, intuitively, my my brain just has a muscle memory and knows when I need to push my joystick to the right to turn right. But just as easily, I could start turning left for you, still pushing my joystick to the right only just because my brain knows what the timing is. Now, I think it's beneficial if you learn first tornado spin and then you learn up and to the right and then you learn down and to the right. So like if you want to master directional arrow left, learn either the entire right side of your controller here or learn the entire left side of your controller here, but you only need to learn one to start out. Totally agree with what Griff is saying. Oh, and Luke from the future here, if you want a free bonus for making it halfway through the video, I wanna let you know my free Discord is open once again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I founded Rocket League's largest free improvement Discord where players go to improve and find teammates. We were shut down for a little bit, but we reopened. We're now past 50K members. And just like always, it's completely free to join. Check out the free Discord, go try some of the training packs or queue with some of the players there. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. I'll have that first link down below. Back to the video. In general, you definitely want to remember that when you're using directional air roll, you want to be moving your left stick a lot. Disagree. Disagree. You don't want to be moving your left stick a lot. That's the whole point of what me and Griff were saying. You learn one direction input with your joystick. That way you have one adjustment that you understand before you try to learn all eight different permutations of arrow left and different joystick inputs. This isn't wrong, like I said, but you can't create muscle memory without a foundation of movement to build it from. Okay, Griff is nicer than me. Griff says this isn't wrong because you can learn anything. You're right. You can learn it any way you want, but it's going to be way harder if you try to learn pushing your joystick all the different directions like Squishy does when you're on day one or day two learning this. Just because somebody is good at a mechanic doesn't mean they're good at teaching the mechanic. And I think the, the opposite is true for Griff here. Like Griff is not an SSL. I think he's GC1, maybe GC... I think he's GC2. I'll give him credit and say he's GC2. But I would say Griff's explanation is way better than like some pros that make air roll tutorials or that just jump into free play and try to talk about air roll, not naming names, because they're good at it. But truth is their explanations like make no sense to me. And if anything, if I was a new player, I would be more confused after watching a pros video than like Griff's here. Just making yourself aware of what your car is doing while it's spinning and accounting for only one directional change helps understand when and where you need to be adjusting to fly in the direction you need. As you can see here, I'm flying through these rings only using directional air roll left and pressing my stick down and to the right. Even if you yes. have access to workshops. Yes, 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 totally agree. So what he's saying is once you understand how to keep your car up in the air in free play, you go into rings, air roll left and down into the right, right? Air roll left and down into the right. And if you lose control, what you do is you wait for your car to get back to a position you recognize, like here, when I see my hoods facing me, I know air roll left and down into the right turns me left. And I know air roll left and down into the right when I'm opposite turns me to the right. You see that? So what he's saying is, you know, you you start to learn one adjustment, basically one combo of directional air roll. And so with this single combo of air roll left and pushing down into the right, based on where my car starts out, right? If my car is forward, it'll turn me to the right. If my car is right, it'll send me forward. If my car is facing to the left, air roll left and push right is now going to send me back at my screen and so on and so forth. You just pay attention to which way your hood is facing and based on when you time your joystick flick, your car is constantly spinning, but you're timing your joystick flick based on where your hood is facing 
to send you in the direction you want to go. I encourage everyone to spend time in the Pillars map that can be accessed from the free play menu here. A lot of no. creators recommend flying around the Pillars. Ah. Okay, I get a lot of comments from console players saying, you know, Luke, I don't have access to rings maps. What do I do? I really don't want to be that guy. I And I, I don't say this to be mean or to make fun of you or to make you feel bad. The truth is, Pillars, it's not terrible. It, it's a its a bad replacement for rings. Yes, you have some obstacles that you can fly around, but the Pillars mess up your camera the whole time. I mean, just watch it. The, the Pillars agree, mess up your practice, camera the but... whole time, and it doesn't force you to turn on a sharp, you know, on a dime, on a sharp angle. It's the same reason that free play is not as good as rings. There aren't obstacles, so you don't actually know if you're doing it right. Lethemir's rings or any rings map, it's the best way to learn air roll. Unless something new comes out and I change my mind, which I may, pillars is definitely not better than rings. I'll tell you that much. After you've put some time into flying around the map and adjusting with a single stick input, I would suggest trying the same thing, but with different directions. Like I mentioned, I naturally worked in up and to the right on my stick, and in no time I was able to fly around with only that directional input alone. This is going to be the absolute quickest way to learn this mechanic, because instead of trying to memorize what to do in every situation, your brain will begin to make connections intuitively and that muscle memory will begin to form naturally. A good tip for this is to start your double jump aerial and quickly begin a tornado spin by holding down your directional air roll and pressing your stick in the opposite direction of that air roll's rotation. This will immediately point the nose of your car up into the air. Then, once your car is moving upward, the best thing you can do is simply stop moving your stick and let your car air roll as it goes upward. If adjustments are needed, it's best to make the smallest ones possible as to not disrupt the upward momentum or send your car offline from its initial target. Okay, so I think what Griff just taught is the tornado spin takeoff, which is just the difference between this, that's a normal takeoff, and this. He's right. It mostly just is personal preference. Like you're not going to get to the ceiling faster with one doing that or the other doing that. It's 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 the same time if you if you execute it properly. The reason I use this one though, this tornado spin is what you use to go for breezies. Nice breezy Luke. Or like if I'm going for a bounce dribble, right? And I want to uh I want to sort of fake out whether or not I'm going for a flip reset. Sometimes I will roll the car like that and you'll see pros do the same as opposed to just jumping up and flying to it because this air roll sort of cloaks your movement. So yes, I agree with Griff. If you're gonna learn any direction input, learn the tornado spin first over anything else because then you can go for, you know, pops where you spin around and people are kind of confused with where you're gonna shoot the ball after that. If you're using air roll left, simply applying that down and to the right on your stick is a great way to spin the car into a position that allows you to catch the car and begin boosting backwards to slow down. Obviously, this is good for the rings and pillars map, but it's super helpful in game situations where you go for a ball, realize you have too much speed, and need to make an in-air adjustment in order to make contact that you need. So now we've reached the end of the video where I tell you to go out and practice flying around, but I'm aware that all we want to do is just hit nasty air dribbles and clip on people. I get it. That's going to come with time. The second hardest part about this mechanic is not just understanding how to fly and control your car in the air, but how to do so when you're trying to also control a ball. This is something that I'm going to cover in my next video, so I hope you'll subscribe and come back when that's uploaded. And okay, he basically ends by saying, that's how you do it in free play. If you want to learn how to do it in game, you know, go practice yourself and stick around for his next video. I actually sent a message to Griff to prove to you guys that there's no bad blood. And he told me that this video is actually the first that he wanted to make and he wants to correct some things in his next one and explain some things better so he said put a year between that video and now lol i've got so much better stuff on directional aerial since then and i'm so stoked to finish it i just haven't had the time i'd like to but it's coming soonish do i think griff was right yes his one joystick input tutorial is better than just going into free play and trying to learn it fresh from nothing is his method different than my method? I don't know, but it was a good video. And Griff explains things a little bit better than me. So stay tuned for part two and do me a big favor. I usually don't ask for favors, but if you want to do me a solid, Griff's tutorials and Griff's videos remind me a lot of when I was starting out in Rocket League and his quality of stuff is so much better than mine ever was. And I know how hard it is for him to make these videos without the help of 
you know, editors like Buck the Video Guy and things like that. Griff is currently at 15.7K subscribers. It would mean the world to me if we could get him up to 20K. If everybody who's still watching this video at this point goes to Griff and subscribe to him, you know, I'm gonna be retiring soon anyway, so you're gonna need a new guide maker. If you could go subscribe to Griff, that would be so sick. The Rocket League community needs a good cause. We need to be a little bit more wholesome. Go sub to Griff, stay tuned for part two. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate you.